was experimenting a lot more with with clothes, I think, from a very early age, like borrowing my brother's clothes or going into my mom's closet. Um, I grew up dancing as well, so that definitely inspired me a lot, just doing performances and uh, the costumes involved and the makeup involved and just the hot kind of like fantasy of it all. I grew up in Nashville, Tennessee until I was 12. And then I moved to Jerusalem for about a year and a half. My father went back to school, so we moved over there. And a lot of my friends lived in New York, so I was ready. I started a fashion column in my school paper. I was writing a column every week and um, doing like street style photography around campus. I was living in London after school, and I was working at W Magazine. I was a real like go getter. I was yeah. just like, like I called the office in London. And they're like, we don't have interns, we don't need interns. I was like, wouldn't take no for an answer. One of the editors had just had a baby. So my first day I was sitting front row at all the shows in London Fashion Week. I was working with Lori Goldstein. I learned a ton about jewelry. Teen Vogue was looking for an accessories editor. I think my experience with Lori and mm -hmm. working with accessories, even though I hadn't had any editor experience, it made perfect sense. I've always done a lot of other things, playing several bands, and for me it's everything kind of happens fairly organically. I don't have like any like rigid like style things that I live by, like oh I never wear this or I never wear that because it's always changing. This dress I got when I was, I when I used to assist on photo shoots, assist stylist, and we were on location in the south of France. And we went to a flea market and I bought this dress and it's totally falling apart. I've never actually even worn it. It's super delicate. As you can see, it's just falling apart, but I, I just had to have it. When I was living in England, it's from Stone Rose's single elephant stone. The cover is, uh, is this. It's a lemon. It's vintage. I'd say like 90% of my clothes are vintage. I do a lot of Cut it. I cut a lot of things. I'm trying to be better about hemming and tailoring. And then these barrettes my dad gave my mom when I was born. And then my mom gave them to me. As an editor, you're out on appointments all the time with your camera. One day, my camera strap broke. I crocheted this thing. Being that I'm like in the fashion world and out and about, all these people were like, oh my god, like, what is that? It's really cool. And after like enough people said that to me, I was like, Hmm. It's like, you know what, I'm going to start selling these. You'd be surprised like how few camera accessories there are. So I was just like, oh, I'm just going to focus on this. It got to be too much. I couldn't really do both, plus the bands, plus everything else. So I was like, I'm just going to go for it. London is when I really started playing all the time. I basically taught myself to play guitar. My band, Open Ocean, our bassist is our primary um, vocalist. And she is really, really into post-punk. I come from... You know, I love like 90s music, but then I also just like being from Nashville, I have like more of like a country Americana influence and then living in England and English influence from like Sid Barrett to uh, the Happy Mondays, rocks and music, 70s glam. I'm obsessed with Freddie Mercury. With my band Rocket from a Drone, it's like there's so many of us and we're all so different. My style is can be related to like my music. Yeah taste and just, you know, one day I'll be like listening to Brian Ferry and it's like, oh, I want to like dress up and put lots of makeup on. My time in Jerusalem was amazing. Living in Nashville, a small town, and then completely uprooted my entire family, took our dog and everything, and we just headed over there. I fit right in, you know, I looked like a little Israeli, and I was young enough that I learned Hebrew really fast, and more so than all, all my family members. The juxtaposition between what people think of something versus reality. It was interesting to then actually live there and, and uh, come back with like real information. Like, oh, it's not really like this. Like, it's not just desert with camels walking around. My friends that I made there, the Israeli kids, you know, just had such a different life experience. You know, when they turn 18, they go to the army for two years. Some of that sense of responsibility and maturity, I try to absorb some of that. Most people don't have to walk out the door and feel unsafe. Nothing compares to being like in a place like Israel where actually things do happen 
on a regular basis, felt safer there. My parents felt more comfortable with me, like taking the bus, you know, to go to the beach an hour and a half away with my friends. Everyone's looking out for everybody, but I didn't really want to leave. That's another thing I learned, like leaving some place and starting new other places and it was a big part of my upbringing. I kind of feel at home in all of them, like I slightly like a gypsy and at the same time, like, you know, most people that you meet, they have like a strong home base or you know memories of where they're from and like mine are kind of all over the place so it's been it's been a challenge you okay with not really having like super strong roots anywhere